We're starting it off. We're kicking it up with Andy Rudman, founder of SureKong. Andy's got an incredible talk and, and some things to show you guys today, actually. I'm just going to go ahead and bring them on. Let's kick it off. Andy, thanks for joining. Bruce, hey, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. You know, uh, the screen printing community definitely needs more events like this from you. So I was thinking maybe you do one of these every week for us. Can you make that happen? <laughs> yeah, I'll get on it. I'll work on that. <laughs> um, but, you know, when I found out this moved from uh, into a webcast format, uh, I thought it'd be fun to do a live shop tour. Um, but we tested it on our end and we came up, you know, we were having difficulties and uh that live part anyway became unreliable so instead we we created a video um let me tell you it was it was really hard so probably a good thing that um i didn't try it live but but uh here it is let's check it out afterwards i have a couple things to talk about and then um maybe some time for q a let's do it hit it so all right good My name is Andy, I'm from Shirt Kong, and I started screen printing just for fun. I actually built my first press. I went to just a local hardware store, bought a bunch of stuff, got it back to my garage, put it together, and it was awful. Like, it kind of printed a one color design, and so I went with it, and uh, one day, somebody said, hey, I'll pay you to print me some shirts, and I'm like, heck yeah. So, so I did, I gave it a shot and I messed them all up, messed them all up. And, um, uh, it was a pink print on a black shirt and I didn't have flash two unit. I had never heard of underbasing. So I was like, oh gosh, what do I do? So I called the local screen print supply store and said, uh, I need help. And they said, come on down. So I got there, I needed a flash, I didn't have any money, but he sold it to me and said, just pay me later, and took the flash home and reprinted the shirts. They turned out excellent, and I had a customer for life. So uh, we kind of grew like that, and um, eventually had, he even had an auto in my garage, and uh, we were on a dead end street so I could get away with it. And um, it worked for a while, but then we had to get out to a building, and. And we did that, but uh, in 2008, I uh, went through a divorce and I, um, I moved back to St. Louis and all I had done is print t-shirts. And so uh, 2008, the economy was horrible. And so um, this cool dude right here became my best friend. And I, uh, we went into business together. We started hauling junk and printing shirts. And, um, and, uh, uh, no, but for real, I came to this very spot and, um, I, uh, I, I counted cars. I wanted to see what kind of traffic was out here before I said, okay, this is where I want to be because I wanted to make sure that there was enough traffic out front and I had enough exposure that, um, some people would come in, buy some shirts and that would pay my rent. Like that was my goal was just to sell enough shirts with the traffic out front to pay my rent. And so, uh, yeah, I started Shirtcon. Why don't you come on in? So, um, we originally just leased uh, one unit, which is a 30 by 80, so it's 2,400 feet, and there was a wall right here, right where this beam is. And um, and my what I was looking for in a building was uh, a door, an overhead door in back that I could get equipment in and I could get boxes in and a front door where we could get customers in and they can come in and place their order and and we could uh, get equipment in and 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 uh, and it worked like this was the right size. So it was perfect. And so um, uh, this front counter is uh, I went into Lowe's one day and I went to the kitchen department and I said, hey, I'm looking for for a front counter and the girl said okay cool what's it for and i said it's for a t-shirt shop she said oh are you hiring i said yep and i said you want to get married and she said yep and we live happily ever after <laughs> uh so come on i'll show you the rest the screen room um our old screen room no screens in there anymore but definitely is still some emulsion on the ground 
Uh, this is where we used to coat screens and rack screens, and it was our dark room. So this is this is uh, as big as it was, and we eventually outgrew it. I mean, there were literally screens all the way to the ceiling. Um, but remember this. Remember how big this was because I'll show you our new and improved screen room in a minute. Um, this is our vinyl department. We This is where we cut vinyl. We have a clamshell press. And our this guy is our brand new 360 which uh, gives us, it's, it's heated on the bottom and the top, and we can do patches, um, uh, either embroidered patches or leather patches, and we do that all right here. And this is our famous twin station tagging machine. So um, we use this a lot. In fact, we've worn out this rubber a couple times and replaced it, but it's awesome. This is the way we've chosen anyway for now to do all of our retagging. This back here, is our lineup. Um, this is how we stay organized. It's really tough as we grew anyway. Uh, we evolved into like, well, how do we run a lineup? And the easiest way we came up with was um, this line is our eight color. This line is our 10 color. This would be our 12 and this would go on the manual. And we pull these out uh, in the morning and we have a production meeting. We talk about what we're printing during the morning. Then we pull some more out in the afternoon. And then there's the afternoon uh, printing. So um, every single box has a proof on it, and it'll and what is what this proof is is what we get what gets printed on in the box. Um, shipping receiving over here. So all the shirts come in this right here, and they get checked in. They get put on the shelves, and sometimes they come straight out to the lineup. But uh, Joanne's doing that today because uh, Brooke is out on vacay, and she's that girl I met at Lowe's. And so she's filling in for shipping and receiving. Um, this is pretty cool. So this is how we actually grew. This is our original space, that beam up there. And our first expansion, we knocked down this wall and went to that second beam. And we were in that space for probably six or seven years. And then we knocked down that wall and went to that third beam. I don't know if you can see that on there. And then last fall, we went to the fourth beam all the way. So. Uh, come on, I'll show you the presses. This is the original eight color, and uh, then that's the ten color. This is Brian and this is Mark. Hey guys, <laughs> this is our split belt uh, dryer, which is uh, worth mentioning because it uh, really saved us. I almost didn't do this. I almost just kept it one belt, but splitting this belt means that we can print. 100% cotton shirts here at one belt speed, and we can print 100% poly shirts here at another belt speed. Uh, otherwise, we're having to coordinate, you know, what job prints here and here at the same time, and it was just impossible. So, super glad I did that. Um, over here is our ink pit. And um, back when we were just to right here, before we knocked down this wall and gained all that space, we had two presses and a manual, and we were literally coming in early, staying late, printing over lunch, coming on weekends, and we were maxed out. So we had to figure out a way to get faster, and the only spot we we came up with was while well, our setup and teardown. And so um, we have a, a two-part process that makes us really fast, and that is this is the teardown process. So this is the this is the ink pit, and um, Essentially what happens is the press assistant, their job, when the, when the job is done printing, their job is to get the screens and get the squeegees off press and rack them, and you don't take any ink out. So all you're doing is literally just taking the screen, putting in this rack, putting your squeegee and flood bar next to the ink that it corresponds to, and then walking back to press to get it set up again so that we can, so we can start printing. Um, and this is part two, so this is the, this is the teardown. Part one is our screen room. So the new and improved screen room. Come on in. So um, remember the old screen room I showed you just a minute ago? Well, this is the new one. And we had no idea how big to make this. So what we did was just draw chalk outlines all around the outside of this and then kind of uh, we actually brought in some screen racks, real screen racks, and set them right here. 
and and then drew chalk outlines on how big the equipment was. And so like we didn't have this stuff yet, so we didn't know. We didn't know where where it was going to actually go or how big to make this room. So that's what we did. We just like put a mock room here and and then walked it out. You know, did it function? Did it work? Was it big enough? And so we pull a screen off and then. You know, we would act like we're putting it on uh, the eye image and said, okay, yeah, that's enough space. And so um, this entire room is automated. We have um, automatic screen coding, and, th and this is how it flows. So it goes, the screen gets coded, and then the screen gets imaged, screen gets exposed, and then it goes out here to the rinse. Um, we got this. I mean, before I got this, I thought to myself, why would anybody buy a machine that would automatically rinse screens. I mean, we can do that with just a hose and a, and a nozzle, but before we did that, we had somebody that was doing that for six hours a day. And it was just, we couldn't do it fast enough. And so now what we do is we put two screens in here, close the door, and then walk away and do something else. Screens finish in there, we have a recipe that's set, and we don't have to worry about it. And they turn out perfect every time. Uh, when the screen's done and it's rinsed, it goes right into here in our super high-tech drying racks. Kyle Caldwell built. Uh, there's a switch back there. All you do is turn it on and these high-powered fans uh, dry the screens uh, super quick. Screens come off of here, dry, and they go onto the screen table. Um, a lot of people wonder how we we pull the tape the right length every time. Well, here's a secret. It's muscle memory by now, but if you're, if I were to come over here because I don't do it as much, nearly as much as Kyle, uh, I know exactly how long to pull the tape. Right here we got short end, goes to here. This is the long end. I'm not gonna waste this tape, it's way too expensive. Sorry, hold on a second. Time out, time out. All right. <laughs> All right, what's next? So. Uh, oh yeah, so once we grew into this space, we had, uh, finally, we had enough space to do auto reclaim, which was a huge deal because, you know, we, we just didn't have enough um, screens, it seemed like, ever. And so uh, I was, we were faced with a choice. We either hire somebody else to clean screens, an additional person, or get this. And, um, uh, well, we decided to get this because um, it just works out over time um, that this is this will be better for us. Um, it's it works just like um, we did before, only it's automatic. So you put the screen in here. This this chamber takes the ink off. This chamber is like a big dip tank, and it melts off the emulsion. And this is a really awesome power washer, and it just blasts everything else off. Um, and then the screen comes out here. It's a finishing station, and it just like repeat the process. So. It goes back into that screen room, gets coded, gets imaged, gets rinsed, gets taped, goes out to press, all over again. Um, what's over here? I don't know. Golf cart. <laughs> uh, you want to go for a ride? Sure. All right. You have any questions, Chad? Uh, go play this or that. Sure. Fire away. Uh, like automatic or a manual? I like automatic in my car, but I don't know. I like printing manually. Uh, one color or 10 colors? I love a one color print. Uh, one big job or a bunch of small jobs? A bunch of small jobs, no doubt. Tight, tight squeeze, hold on, hold on. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, do you like the office or Parks and Rec? Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Parks and Rec. Hold on a second. This is this is a little bit tricky. Um, hang on one sec for me, okay? Oh, we're gonna have to plan that out better next time. <laughs> All right, where were we? Friends or Seinfeld? Uh, Seinfeld. How did I even hit that? Claire, that's all your fault. 
<laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I think we we're here. We're at the office. Yeah, sure thing. See you guys. Andy, that was awesome. Thanks for sharing. Oh yeah, for sure. Can you can you hear me again? I can hear you. You're back. You're live. Okay. Yeah. It's to squeeze is my is this the right mic you know yeah you sound good um all right cool yeah so um it was super hard to squeeze the like a whole a 15 minute you know shop tour into this into this time but uh did our best <laughs> <laughs> no it was awesome there's a question also um how many square feet was the first shop and how big is it now after the expansion um that first first unit was a 30 by 80 so it was 2400 square feet this building is kind of set up like that so it's every time we expand it's the option is 2400 square feet so now we're at uh i can't do the math i think we're at 12,000 roughly so um so yeah i mean it's we were um pre like this last fall before our last expansion we were at 7500 and it really was it seemed like a perfect size at the time but uh, we had an opportunity and we like we still couldn't keep up and we needed an auto reclaim and things like that. And we, honestly, sometimes we just needed a space to store boxes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this there was a dance studio uh, next door to us and they they moved. And it was either like it felt like any anyway, it was now or never. We were either we either took that space or somebody else was going to take it because when that dance studio was there, we were always it seemed like we we're always fighting for parking out there. And uh, we almost had to actually um, get a shuttle. We were going to park. There's a Walmart right by us. And we we're going to park at Walmart and then shuttle people here in the morning. And I don't know. That seems like a disaster. So um, one of the reasons why we took that spot was just so that all parking is ours uh, in the front of the building. And that happened, obviously, when they didn't renew it or? Yeah, they didn't renew the lease. They, they moved. And um and and so we said, uh, that, you know, this would be perfect. And of course, we did all that, um, not knowing what was about to happen in the spring, and um, and something happened. So uh, we're working our way through it, though. And I'm still glad we did it because, um, you know, it's building. It feels um, it feels good. It feels good. A good question that was asked is talking about your traffic and drive-by exposure. Do you mm -hmm. think that that helped? I know you have a huge sign out front too. Do you think that that helped? uh drive sales or or no well uh, so we're a custom screen printing shop you know so um for us a lot of our business initially anyway a lot of our business was just th that exposure you know i wanted i wanted people as they drove by to to see our shop and i mean this was remember this was in 2009 and the internet was coming you know it was it was going to be a thing but there wasn't that way to, to get yourself heard, you know, like you want to, um, or we wanted to, um, like shout where everybody was listening, where were people paying attention? And so, mm -hmm. um, as that came, as Google, uh, came, well then we, we focused on SEO. I mean, that's, that's all we did. I hired somebody and I said, do you know, cause I didn't know SEO. So I was like, do you know SEO? And he says, yep. I said like, well do that, whatever that is. And, um, and it was like a, this crazy equation. And so part of it was video, uh, part of it was Facebook, part of it was our listings, part of it, you know, was then Instagram came along. And so we focused on, we wanted to, so when go, somebody Googled us, Googled Shurkong, not Shurkong necessarily, but Googled screen printing or Googled um, t-shirts or, or whatever, we wanted to show up in that first, they used to call them like seven packs. And we wanted to be at the top. And uh, so we did whatever we could uh, to get there. <laughs> Got it. That makes sense. You you had that uh, uh, the the retail was that retail in front or was it more of samples? Um, I guess that's a little of both. We have we have a retail location. Uh, the, where we live, there's um, the county we're in. It's a suburb of St. Louis, and our county has six hundred thousand people and like eleven high schools. And so we have. Uh, we have some um, uniform, exclusive uniform programs for some of those schools. Mm -hmm. And so when people come in, you know, like we have this, I don't know if you, so I don't know if you noticed, there's, we have this open concept. When you come in 
to our front counter, whether it's at the screen printing or embroidery counter, which I didn't have a chance to show you, um, you see the back, you see, or you, you see embroidery happening, you know, you see screen printing happening. And I always thought that was important, kind of like, and I, and I kind of took that from, you know, the restaurant world. Whenever I went into a restaurant and that, they had that kitchen that was open and you could see the chefs cooking, I don't know, for some reason, the food tasted better. And so um, anyway, I wanted people when they're in here to never forget that, that that's what we do and we do it right here. That last shop I had, the first shop I had, um, where there was a wall separating. So you would come in the front and we would, there was a sales counter and we would sell, you know, shirts right there. But, mm. but there was a divide, you know, there was a separation from the front and the back. Was like, what are they doing back there? You know, like making meatloaf or something. But <laughs> no, we screen print, uh, we screen print t-shirts and there's no doubt. In fact, you know, people, I see them looking over and like they're curious and, and we, we give tours, you know, like that was a thing that we are known for. In fact, we have colleges come through here, like design, uh, you know, classes in high schools that come through that are interested in that are doing screen printing. Maybe they say, Hey, well, let's go check out the shop and, and we'll, and we'll give a tour and, and show them, show them what we do. That's awesome. What about, uh, when did you know when you needed another automatic versus, I don't know, another shift maybe, or try to squeeze in more efficiency. When was it the right time that you said, okay, let's pull the trigger? Uh, I always heard people say, uh, you know, hey, you should run another shift, like after at five o'clock or whatever, whatever that might be. But um, for, for us, the way we run our production, we have the, the designer, the artist is is always there. So um, we are trying to be as accurate as possible. So there's four people that, that approve that job before, before we actually hit print start. And that's the press, press operator, press assistant, quality control, and the designer. And so, um, I thought about it like, well, maybe we could do this. We could accomplish that with FaceTime. You know, we could, maybe the designer could be at home and we could bug them at 10, 10 and nine or whatever. <laughs> hey, does this look right? But, um, I never thought I could pull off, um, a second shift and also i didn't want to be called at like midnight and say hey andy we got a like the place is on fire or whatever you know so um so for for us anyway it was always uh we should add more equipment and it wasn't a decision that's made in week one like oh we're really busy we should get another press i mean it was more of a thing that it was painful in that spot for enough time like wow we just went four months this isn't a like some sort of surge you know that's just um that just happened you know this is this is real like we cannot keep up it's making us miserable we're here till 8 10 at night or whatever and even though we don't want to run a second shift we're kind of running a second shift i always called that whenever we were running um past five we call it the bonus hour so you know um you could sign up for that so like we would have a i would have a dry erase and I'd say who wants to work the bonus hour and there's some people that want to that want to work overtime, but, but that's risky because, you know, you can't do that for, for too long. You know, you, somebody works and they're working for too long in overtime, overtime is, it's one thing to do overtime for a week or for do it maybe two weeks or three. But if you're just here and you're always here then you're going to have some burnout. Um, and so some people would say, Hey, I want the, Hey, I'll take overtime. I'll come in on Saturday. I'm like, no, you just need to take a weekend. I'll see you on Monday. So like you come back fresh and ready to go. So we'd always, we'd grab other people. Got it. That makes the sense. About the second press. Was that, was that good? I mean, you did it right. It's, it's that it's making you miserable. It's not fun to be around at the shop and mm -hmm. you guys have done everything that you feel like you can and you're still getting more jobs coming in and you don't want to add right. another shift to, to, create a good work-life balance for you what what would you say you know shops just getting started maybe manual or starting to get to first auto things that you've learned in your long journey here that you would pass on um well for me uh when i got my first auto i did it out of um pain really um in my wrist like i had i, I had printed for i would say almost five years and I think we all know what it's like to print white ink onto a hoodie, especially back then the inks, the inks were even worse and, you know, to push through a screen. And, and so, um, you know, my, my, my wrists were killing, my hands were killing me. And so I was like, I don't know, I need, I need something that, that, that I don't have to do this all day. It's one thing to print a manual job for a couple hours. That's fun. 
but it turns into work and then it can turn into pain after years. And so I was like, well, if I don't change something now and get this auto, um, then I'm going to end up in, with, uh, with surgery. But also when I got that auto, it was complete. It changed my life. You know, I went from, why is that? Well, I went from, um, being able to compete in, on a whole different level, you know? So, uh, on a manual, you can only print, if you have a six color job, I mean, you can only, you have to print one color at a time. Well, on an auto, they all print at the same time. So, I mean, it's like, it's fast. It's fast as shit, you know? And so you get, you can compete, you can, you know, you can uh, bid on jobs that are a thousand shirts and 2000 shirts and, and 5,000 shirts, which back then when I was younger, when I was in my twenties, I was like, yeah, that's the best. You know, <laughs> I want to do, uh, I want to do a hundred thousand shirts. But now I was like, I, I, I'm terrified of a hundred thousand shirt order. We do pretty large orders sometimes, but, uh, whenever we do that, I, uh, I make sure we do not only a, uh, a you know, like a digital proof, but we do a physical sample. So we'll shut, set the whole job up and um, it, whether it's the customer comes in and approves it um, here at the shop, like an on-press approval, or we, we mail ship it to them or take it, courier it to them, whatever it takes so that they see that actual shirt before we go and print, you know, 20,000 shirts and they're all wrong. You know, that's the last thing we want. So. And is that why then you... Said so in like in the video, you prefer smaller jobs. Yeah, I think everybody. Um, it, I, I, every once in a while, it's fun to to get a you know a, a big one in, and then you and you run it. But it just takes a toll. You know, it takes a toll on your body as a printer to 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 load like this all day. I mean, I'm pretty uh, in my in my twenties, I think I and, and in my thirties. I'm dating myself here, but in my thirties. I could easily do my, I always knew I could do 3000 shirts, come back the next day and I'm cool. Like I'm fine. Like no problem. I can do it again. But now, uh, I just, I can't do that many and no, and these guys really can't either. And so, um, I think all of them will tell you, and it's fun. It's fun setting up a job. You know, it's fun registering a job. It's hard. It's a challenge. Like what's the print order? Um, is there a better print order? Those kind of choices, you know, that I think that's why people get addicted to screen printing is that um, while there's so many variables and and anything can go wrong at, like at any moment and you don't even, sometimes you don't even know why. You're like, you've been doing this, I've printed millions of shirts, right? But sometimes I just stared and it's like, what happened? Like, what, how, how did we even do this? You know, it's like, is this, I'm such a rookie. So <laughs> I don't know. No, but, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, keeps me, uh, I think that's why people, really is why people get addicted to it because it's this perfect blend of art and creativity and science you know you've got to like know pretty be pretty good at both and it and it keeps you coming back uh every day that's great yeah andy i really appreciate putting that video together showing us around your shop we haven't been able to do a shop tour in a little while like we've been doing obviously but uh, i know those were great i have, i invited you down before all this but i know you're busy no I one should day you up on it yeah no soon soon um, but Andy, thank you again so much. We really appreciate it. We'll be posting that as well later. So you guys can watch it again, if you'd like, and make sure to buy your own golf cart too, for your shop. Seems like that was a pro <laughs> tip here. Oh, that was rented. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Andy. All right. See you guys.